Hey, so we meet again. So uh, today I'm gonna have a new painting for you. Um, we're gonna do, actually today is gonna be different. Today we're doing oil. Um, so, well, let me tell you about the materials that I have and I'll explain this to you a little bit better. So I have a nine by 12 <clears throat> canvas. Of course it's toned with uh, burnt sienna because I want that warm undertone for this painting. And it's gonna be a very like loose, impressionistic kind of a painting. And uh, so let me go uh, over the colors that I have. Canyon Yellow. I had a little bit of a mess here. I dropped the blue and it went right on it, but it's okay, we're gonna make grass with it. Cadmium Yellow, Alizarin Crimson, Cerulean Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Sap, green yep yes yeah, sap green and titanium white so um okay and let me show you what i'm painting today Ooh, something different all right so the reason why i wanted to do this painting just for the gist of it is to teach you how to be loose really loose with your painting. So that really works out for just about everybody, even like plein air painters. If you want to go out play, uh, paint in oils, you really want to capture the scene as quick as possible. And when I mean capture the scene, you capture only what's important, what draws your eyes, okay? What gets your attention right off the bat? And like I've told many people, and whether in the comments or other painting session, when planar painting, it's almost like your house is catching on fire, okay? What are you gonna take with you? All right, let's say you got a backpack with limited things you could take. What are you gonna take? Same thing with planar painting or impressionistic painting and loose style painting. Just the essentials. That's all you wanna do, okay? So you're gonna turn something that's really not really pretty into something like really nice and with movements and feeling and you, you really feel the expression behind it okay and of course as you get better with your confidence of how loose you can paint you can start tighten up your painting meaning get a little bit more and more detail as you build up your confidence and then just move on and make more detailed paintings but i just want to show you the basic basic blocks of painting of doing a painting just we're going to do something quick now if, if this painting comes out good great if it doesn't you know uh you will get the essential at least that much of the of the painting at least somebody who comes up to you is going to get the gist of it and say oh i can recognize this all right so i have my horizon just take a little bit of my i did this with acrylics by the way it's toned with acrylics it dries fast so i don't have to sit there and wait forever for for this to dry so the main focus is going to be on the on the buffalo and uh not very much sky so we're gonna go up here that's about the skyline right there and i'm using um odorless mineral spirits to uh thin down this paint all right so let's basic shape of that buffalo it's like Got this. So this thing's got this shape of Remember, you just want to get the gist of the movement. Okay, here's the belly. Big broad shoulders.
is eating grass. Horn is right there. Okay, well, um, looks like it's about right. Okay, basic shape of that. Now there's some trees in the back here. There's probably a little bit of umber. So, just a general shape of the trees. So we're going to try to get this under an hour. I'm going to try. All right. Now let me start with, um, let me see. I don't want to use too big of a brush. I'm going to use a, this should work. This is an old beat up brush that I have. This is a Pro White um, by Creative Mark. You find them at Jerry's Artorama. It's a number two. Yeah, I think it's a number two. Synthetic brush. I will be uh, changing around. I'll be using synthetics and bristle brushes too. So let's start with the sky, uh, render this down a little bit, and then we're gonna start working towards our buffalo afterwards. So I'm gonna be working a little bit everywhere because I'm gonna really try to find the approximate colors. Okay, uh, I've been asked that question. How do I know what colors to start with? Well, I don't know. The color is not really what is important. The value, how dark or how light a color is, uh, next to another color. That's what's important, how dark or how light. Then comes the color. The colors are gonna be approximate, okay? Um, and they're gonna remain in the muted side of things, meaning they're not gonna be high chroma colors. So I'll, as we're going along, I'm gonna show you. So now I'm looking at the sky, which I can see a little bit of Cerulean, maybe a little bit of ultramarine, and I see some burnt sienna just to. That was a little bit too much. I forgot that this is not acrylic. With oils, the. Um, they cover better than acrylics. Let me check this out. Yeah, this works. Uh, there, it's more powerful than acrylics. Acrylics, I could have to go over like a couple times in order to uh, really cover the canvas. So, oils, yeah, it's a little different story. Ooh. All right, so. And if it, it's okay if some of the background color shows through. It's going to be really of an impressionistic style painting. I'm leaving some openings here and not going too crazy yet because I know there's some trees that are going to so it's going to be like broken colors
I'm going to let that set up a little bit. All right. And eventually I can go back, mix the same color, and paint over um, or and around some of the branches I'm going to put in eventually. So but I just need to let to let this set up a little bit for for a minute. All right, so now I'm gonna start, now that I got that sky somewhat covered, and you can see it's really muted compared to what cerulean blue and ultramarine blue looks like. It's really like kind of a grayed down because the thing is if you make too much of a high chroma, any kind of highlights that I put on a tree will not really stand out, okay? Because these colors are not muted down or they're too high of a chroma that it really doesn't stand out. The best way to bring out highlights is it's either to make something, the surrounding colors darker or to make them more muted. Remember that, you want your colors muted. I know it looks bright outside and stuff like that, but when you do muted colors, it's more appeasing to the eye and it really helps with uh, with highlights and all whatnot. All right, so let's start with um, Buffalo here. So I'm gonna go with that one, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Uh, burnt umber, and maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. Really get those darks in there. I may be having too big of a brush for this, but let me see. Just broad strokes. Wherever I just see. Dark colors. Something up here on his mane, his or her mane, I can't tell. And a waggly tail here. Actually, it should have done that one shorter. It's okay, I'll fix that after. And actually, um, I'm gonna use a small round. This is a Georgian from De La Rowney. Uh, number one round. I like those brushes. They uh, they pick up a lot of paint. So let me see. I see the hoofs are Okay. 
All right, let me start filling up the buffalo, and then uh, eventually I'm going to start working on some of these darks uh, over here to do the trees. Um, so let me see. I can see some burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of, whoops, crimson. A little bit of white, more burnt umber. Let me see. Yep, maybe a little bit more red. Hint of yellow. More sienna, more red, more yellow. I see some. Oops. Just be mindful of the changing colors. I'm trying to see the approximate colors, what, like almost as if you're um, squinting, you're looking for the approximate colors of what you see. And then after that, you could always change things around. So now I'm just looking at local colors. Maybe a little bit of blue. Trying to define the muscles a little bit. I need to go back and put a little bit more dark here. Kind of went too light too quickly. Now you can tell the difference between this brown over here and the darks. So I'm just like re strengthening the darks, I guess, is one way to put it. Emphasize the darks a little bit more. There you go. eye socket here somewhere. Now you wonder why I didn't do anything here because some of my lighter colors are going to be right up here and I don't want to put any darks there because it's going to be hard to put lighter colors So now let me see, I'm going to use, 
Uh, let me go continue with this brush here. It's doing good so far. All right, so I'm going to use white mixed with this pile of colors here. Maybe add a little bit more sienna. Maybe add a little bit of yellow, more sienna. I see some darks up here in his hump. Now I see more yellows over here on this side with all this fur. All right, we're gonna let that rest for a second. I'm just gonna move on and go start doing the grasses here and then we're gonna start, actually, let me start with the trees a little bit. Let me make some darks. Um, so far, I'm 24 minutes in. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber. Maybe a little bit of cat red. So let me see, let's define some trees here. Same mix, a little bit more red. Because eventually I'm going to put a variation of colors. I'm using the edge, the flat edge of the brush. And just shaping those branches. Remember to reload your brush. The common mistakes a lot of beginners make is not putting enough paint on your brush. And then you wonder why your paint is sliding everywhere or it's mixing too much. When you see it's mixing, just add and just go soft touch it soft i'm not putting too much pressure some branches here There's some branches um, look i'm still using a fat brush here Maybe I should go down a little bit more on the brush. Let me just add. Let me use this uh, Filbert brush. This is Soho, another uh, one from Jerry's Artorama. It's a number two Filbert, and it's a natural bristle. And I'm just gonna use it because I can pick up a lot more paint with natural bristles. And I could hold a sharper edge here. 
All right. So let's see. There you go, just like that. Light, light, light touch. Twisting my brush as I'm going. And there's gonna be varying colors of uh, trees there. Let me see, there's a little bit of white, there's other trees here in the background I'm gonna let some colors mix. I'll just give it more of a distant feel. Okay, back to my flat. Let's start working on the grass. We're gonna do, the base for the grass is gonna be cad yellow ultramarine blue, I can see some red. And white. Now the reason why I used red is to really mute down that green. Okay, and uh, let me see how, yeah, this is good enough. Really mute down that green to give it a distant look. And actually I could add a little bit more red. There you go. Then just paint right between the trees there. Look, and I'm still using a, a big brush here. I'm not even using my small brush, just. Maybe a little bit more yellow. You could keep adjusting the colors at will. Just making a separate little pile here. And try to keep it close to the same value. Remember what I meant by value? How dark or how light? Okay, so maybe a little bit of burnt sienna to give the rest of that valley like a reddish tinge. Maybe a little bit more. Add some yellow. Mix these colors together. There you go, just like that. Remember, the grass is not what's important, but you still want to define distance. Okay, and you can see I'm keeping those colors very muted. Now this, this is partly why it was important to uh, do an undertone on this canvas because if I kept the canvas white uh, Houston would be having some problems so and this as you can see is giving the painting some warmth can I have used another color yeah I could have used orange or you know what other colors you want but I just find that um, I actually could have even used yellow, a yellow ochre. I just find that um, burnt sienna gives a nice, use a little bit of the sap green. A little bit more sienna, a little bit more white.
I'm going to change the color of the grass a little bit. It's going to be a little bit different from what I'm looking at. Remember, it's just a reference photo. I don't have to be a slave to my reference photo. I can, you know, add, subtract, whatever I want. You know, give it your personal touch. And look, I'm still using that same pile. I'm just varying the, the amount of one color over the other here and there. Just cutting in here, just cutting in. And see, I'm letting some other colors mix in with my yellow. All that's going to do is just really like mute that yellow down. And notice I'm doing like up and down strokes to mimic the direction of the subject. So, I mean, if I'm painting the grass, the grass is not, you know, sideways like this, is it? No, it's not. It's, it's, uh, it's got, it's up and down, it's an up and down motion with the grass. Let me go a little bit more. As I'm coming forward, I'm gonna go a little bit more chroma on this yellow. You see by what I mean by chroma? I'm not really diluting this paint, this color with another color. I'm almost using it pure. So this is what you're, when you hear somebody saying, you know, hey, I'm um, high chroma or, you know, or muted chroma, what have you. Oops. See, I'm just carving. Sure you have enough paint. I see some greener grass, and even the grass I'm muting, muting the grass down a little bit with a little bit of Actually, I see some. The shadow under this buffalo, it's a darker blue. And I'm leaving some space here and there, and you'll see why in a minute. Everything's pretty much has a reason behind it.
maybe I should explain the reason. Um, because I'm going to add lighter colors here in between some of these spots. So I don't want to cover the whole thing with just one color. I just want to, you know, uh, sparse it out a little bit. You know, let, let me let me do that now and show you what I'm talking about. So uh, let me go back with this yellow here. A little bit of this cerulean, maybe a little bit of this burnt sienna. Give it this orangey color. All right, so. You see? There you go. So I will minimize the mixing between colors. I mean, if there's any mixing, it's very minimal. And, you know, look, it's just vary your strokes as well just pushing up that grass here like that It's okay if some, it looks blurred because it's really not all that important. Okay. And you notice I made the focus more over here because the higher chroma, the lighter colors are up front. If I really wanted to give some, um, some focus into the distance, I would have added some highlights back there just to draw your eyes back there. But really, the main focus is up front. It's really not anywhere in the back. So the back is just really non-essential. All right, so if you're a plein air painting right now, I'm at 39 minutes uncut. And um, so we're going to continue. All right, let me continue finishing this buffalo here. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber. See how I can apply. darker colors over what I did uh, just did earlier is because I let the paint set up a little bit there you go so it's giving me leeway there too So now we're going to start adding some colors here and there to really, the trees are going to be a little bit less, so don't worry, we'll get to those in a few minutes. They're really not that important. Right now, I just got to concentrate. Like if you were out in, in uh, plein air, you might want to concentrate on the main sub, oops main subject first before it gets away from you so it'd be something important to do there and you see with these natural bristles I can pick up a lot more paint all right
right, so a little bit more burnt umber, burnt sienna, some red, maybe a hint of white. Like I said, a hint. Let's start describing. Some of these muscles. And give some definition to this bad boy. Remember, to keep your colors pure, once it starts mixing with the other color, wipe your brush and then go back on the on the attack. Put more. Reload your brush with new paint. See there I'm mixing. I'm just flipping the brush around here. There you go. Okay, let me work on that mane as well. is more on the reddish side Okay. See more of a burnt umber and perhaps some red. It's kind of hard when you're trying to do browns because there's like many variation on which you can work on browns. You just have to, with practice, you'll 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 eventually get it and really you're gonna find your own voice and once you're there you'll uh, sorry I'm not finishing my sentence here adding some white Okay. Now let me work on some of the highlights. Maybe cad yellow, a little bit of sienna. And look at the direction of the fur, which way it's going. See some grays there. To 
make a nice gray you could always use ultramarine blue and burnt umber I'm gonna use my little round brush. I'm gonna put some darks in between these spaces. I'm gonna go burnt umber, ultramarine blue, a little bit of alizarin crimson. So Describe some of this fur here. So now there's some blues I see in the shadow. Add white, ultramarine blue, mix these colors there. I can see some accents of blue. light touches maybe a little bit of crimson I'm going to work a little bit on his head as well. All I used was burnt sienna and burnt umber and some white. I need to redefine that eye a little bit more there. So uncut, I'm at 52 minutes.
organisera eller vem man to define that head a little bit more so let me just there you my filbert brush from earlier let's put some of the sun highlight it's really great down maybe a little bit of crimson I just use um, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, a little bit of Ultramarine Blue, a little bit of Yellow, just to make it like this cool grayish color. Forcing some of these darks. You see, I can just go back, back and forth, back and forth with the, with your colors, with your paint. I 
crocheting to bring it about to the same level. put a horn and then I'm gonna start working on the tree so the horn I see some blue and some white actually I need a smaller brush uh, this is a Princeton poly tip a number four round uh, I mean liner I need to make like a finer line you see where it is about right there and I see some So that's that. Um, actually, let me work on that mane a little bit more here. I can see All right, now we're going to start working on the trees. I'm going to work on the trees, but there you go. All right, trees. Okay, ah, uh, trees. So let me just take any darks here, burnt umber, and I'm at one hour and two seconds, unedited. Okay, let's 
start the trees. All right, so now let's just start the process of the trees. And I'm really not following the reference photo too much. I'm just ad lib. Just wherever I see fit. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt, I mean, a lizard and crimson makes a nice little purple with a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit more white. Dilute the paint a little bit. Okay, now start working maybe on some, some highlights. force some of the darks here. white and a little bit of yellow so clean off your brush add more paint your 
brush off. Same thing here. see some burnt sienna some of these trees It's okay if I'm losing some of the edges here and, and they're more like um, blurred edges and I'm totally fine with that. You don't want, especially when it's in the background like that, I don't want them to be too much in focus otherwise you're, it will draw your eyes over there. So in the background you really want some blurred edges. All right, so let me finish by adding some more to this uh, background sky here. that background there a little bit uneven to blur hmm <clears throat> excuse me to lose some of these edges here accentuate some of the hair the sun's coming from that direction I know I'm gonna get that question <laughs> it's come up before I guess I forgot to say direction of the sun here. Let's accentuate these some So now we're gonna do this. The only thing I'm missing now is just a tail.
Uh, let me just put some There you go. Give that some distance there. So now, for effect, last but not least, dry brush some grasses here and there. Clean off my brush. There you go. And actually, add some more blue. For that shadow. There. One hour and sixteen minute uncut. You want to add a touch of reflection off the top of this bad boy here. Give it some definition. Good. Maybe I might just uh, play around with some colors here, making some grasses. Let me see. And I could just, once you're done with your plein air, you usually, you know, uh, could add more things to your painting as you go along. There you go. Now I have time. I pretty much locked down my subject. So now I can actually play around a little bit more. Do whatever I want because I pretty much got my subject down. There you go. Just mess around. Once this dries, I can actually even <clears throat> put more highlights. Here, let's do that.
and once you know it's a lot of times a lot of uh, plein air painters take their paint their paintings home and eventually the next day once the paint lays up a little bit more will tend to add more or you could uh, paint dry on uh, wet <sighs> wet on dry to uh, accentuate the color so they basically go home and they reevaluate the painting and just add touches where they need to be by that time I mean the paint has set up enough that where you could add dry I mean wet paint on this on the dry canvas there you go boom all right hey I'm gonna call this done I keep playing around with it I'm gonna screw it up I just can't stop. There you go. Alright. Really make his hair stand out there a little bit. Oh, wait. There you go. Just got a sign now and we're done. real time one hour and 20 minutes so if I edit this uh, video you know exactly how long it took all right Ta-da! And we're done, folks. We're done. So, an hour and 20 minutes. So, if you have any questions um, about the painting and the materials that I use, a lot of it you can find in the description in the links below. And I'll take it to my Amazon store where you can, you know, purchase. Uh, there's no extra charge to you. Uh, the businesses will just eventually give me a, a piece of the pie there. They get, give me a cut of their uh, for referring them, which I will refer to a lot of good uh, materials that I use because I've tested those products and I really, really, really like them. And please don't forget to like and subscribe help with the algorithm hopefully I'll have a bigger outreach help the channel out and uh, guys thank you again for all your support watching these videos and I really hope that you learned something from this on how to stay loose and uh, don't worry about the details forget the details hell you see it went from nothing to something in about an hour's time and with just a loose stroke and you can still make out what the painting is and it's lively it's you know it's uh, it's got movement so with that I'm gonna leave you and uh, say thank you again and I hope you guys have a great day and uh, bless y'all and thank you for your support have a good day <laughs>